Hello dear friends, you're welcome to our YouTube channel. We hope that this video you're about to watch and every content on our channel will bless you tremendously. Please subscribe if you haven't yet done so and turn on the notification bell, so you do not miss any of our content. Don't forget to like this video as well and be a blessing to others by sharing it with them. We love to read your comments. Kindly let us know in the comments section, how our videos have impacted you. Thanks and God bless. This movie you're about to watch is part 2 of the series from last week. Please watch part 1 on our channel before you proceed on to part 2. The link will be in the description box. Thanks and God bless you. Gerald, I'm doing a deep cleaning of the house today and I have cleaned everywhere except the room beside the guest room where you work at night. Don't bother about that room, I clean it myself. Why do you always say so whenever I ask to clean that room? I have never even seen you clean it and why is the room always locked even when you're inside? I don't even know what the room looks like. Nothing really. It's just my personal workspace that's all. Even though, why must it be locked always? Are you hiding anything there? Why would I be living in this house for the past 8 months and I am not allowed to enter a certain room? Don't make an issue out of this flimsy Manatara, it's not that deep. Really, you don't worry, nothing can be hid for too long. Tara what's going on? You've been so withdrawn since you got married. When am I going to even be able to visit you and Gerald at home? Tanya, I'm so sorry about that. About visiting, I really don't know. Gerald wouldn't allow me have anyone visit us. Wow, I am not just anyone sis. Your family is not just anyone. Dad and Mum are worried sick about you, they didn't even know Gerald is the one who would not allow us visit. What is his reason? It makes me sad too. We have had series of arguments over this issue. He gives no plausible reason, other than that he wants to keep his life private. This is serious. It is. I don't know what to do Tanya. But how is the marriage so far? Would you say you're enjoying your home? I can't really say I am. It's been the most tiring one year of my life, I wouldn't lie to you Tanya. Oh dear, but what's going on? Is Gerald maltreating you? I can't say he is. There's just something I can't place about him. I get very scary dreams every single day, whether I sleep at night or in the day, he seems unperturbed about it. There's just a very fear-inducing atmosphere in that house, I can't really explain. Are you sure, you are not stressed? Why not try seeing a therapist or something? Gerald has been suggesting the same thing, but this is not about therapy. Tanya, there's something sinister about that house, about Gerald and his brother Harvey as well. I had suspicions about the both of them from when we began dating. He never takes Harvey's call where I am, they both act like they are hiding something. What then could it be between them? Tanya, I wish I knew. On our way to the hotel after our wedding, Harvey was calling him, he didn't take the call because I was there. Sometime at midnight, Gerald left the room while I was asleep. I looked for him but couldn't find him. I just felt to look out the window and I saw him and Harvey at the car park of the hotel talking. What were they talking about at the midnight of our wedding for God's sake? When he returned to the room, I asked where he went, he said, his wristwatch got missing and he felt to check outside for it, probably it fell on our way in. Oops, why did he lie? Did you mention to him that you saw him and Harvey at the car park? I didn't bother, since he chose to lie. I wonder what they could be hiding. Tara, you are my priority though, I want you to be fine. What do you think I can do to help you? Just pray for me, I can't figure anything out. Things will be fine. Just hang in there and stay hopeful. Thank you Tanya. So where are you headed now? I'd alight at Onyx Hotel. A date right? Of course. I just found a new money bag boyfriend. He spoils me just the way I had always imagined. We are going on our first vacation together next month at Santorini. Just be careful out there Tanya. I wish I didn't get carried away with Gerald's wealth and social status. Now I'm married to him and I am not as happy as I thought getting married to a rich man would be. In fact my life feels worse. I just realized that love and marriage is not all about money. Okay, I'd see for myself. It's alright. My regards to dad, mum and Sally when you go home. I'd extend your regards. Gerald, what's going on? Where are you going to? Good morning Tara. At least say good morning before asking questions. Pardon my manners please. I'm just surprised to see you all dressed up and packing your travel box early this morning. Yeah, I'd be traveling for a business meeting, I would be away for a week. 
Why am I just knowing? I'm sorry Tara, must have skipped my mind. Really? Well, I'd be going to the hospital this morning, I have been feeling sick for the past three days. Really? Why didn't you tell me? If you had paid attention enough to your wife, then you'd have known she hasn't been feeling well. Forgive me Tara, I'd ask my driver to drop you off at the hospital. It's alright, I'd drive myself down there. Have a safe trip. Please take care of yourself Tara, I'd be back next week. Alright. Ma'am, so from the test results, everything is fine with you. You are pregnant, three weeks gone. What? Anything the matter ma'am? Why are you crying? I'm just overwhelmed, I have been trying for the past three years, didn't see it coming. Ah. Oh. Congratulations ma'am. Thank you doctor. Kindly meet the nurse at the reception and register the pregnancy, then you can begin antenatal immediately. Alright doctor. Take care. I will. Oh god, I'm so overwhelmed, I need to call my family and give them this news of my pregnancy. My parents finally would be grandparents. I'd wait for Gerald to return from his journey before giving him the good news, that would be a nice welcome package. Wait, what is this I'm seeing? Gerald left the door of this room beside the guest room open. Can't be true. It is always locked. I need to go see and confirm this is true. Let me even see what he is hiding in there. Powers of the Underworld Order, I have come, it is now time for my soul to depart and join my other comrades at the yearly convention. Preserve my body from corruption as I go. I ascend, I ascend, I ascend. Wait, isn't that Tara screaming? Tara, oh my, how did I forget to lock the door? I thought I locked it. Oh my god, what did I just see? I knew Gerald was up to something bad. Oh god, that was so scary, little wonder, I have been having nightmares since I moved into this house. Oh my goodness, my husband is a cultist. Where do I run to? I can't live here anymore. Tara, why did you come into my sanctuary? Sanctuary? Gerald, what is going on in there? I knew there was something. Oh my god Gerald, why did you deceive me? You have just disrupted a very crucial process. Do you know what your coming in there will cost me? I don't care. How will I be living with an occultic husband? I have complained about nightmares and fear since I moved in here and you made me look like I didn't know what I was saying. Oh I see. I now see what you and Harvey are always discussing in secret and hiding. I'm leaving this house for good. You go nowhere woman. It's a taboo in the first place for you to enter my sanctuary and if you want to stay alive, you had better not disclose what you now know to anyone. The day you do, you'd be dead. Oh my god. This is scary Gerald. I am serious about that. Now I need to go back there and travel for my meeting okay. We'll still be away for a week. See you when I'm back. My god. Oh, god is wonderful. I'm so excited at the news of Tara's pregnancy. After three years of waiting, we are going to be grandparents soon. Exciting news indeed. God has answered our prayers. Yes he has. I'm worried for her though. She doesn't seem happy since she got married three years ago. We can't even visit her, we get to see her only when she sneaks in here for a visit, without her husband's knowledge. That has me worried as well. I don't know if you noticed, she didn't sound as excited as one would have thought she'd be, while on the call to tell us she was pregnant. I observed as well, I don't think Tara is enjoying her marriage. She needs me more, now that she's pregnant and I worry, her husband wouldn't allow me to be there to take care of her. We just have to be hopeful that she'd be fine, you know, we can't meddle into their marital affairs, we have to be careful and she hasn't yet told us anything that we can hold on to yet. Well, that's true. I feel guilty, we didn't pay attention to Sally and what she said while Tara was preparing to get married. Well, Sally spoke with Tara about it then and she reacted so badly about it. Sally told me, it caused a dent in their relationship since then. Yeah, she told me too. I just feel we'd have done better as parents. Well. She hasn't said she is not enjoying her marriage, we are just making assumptions based on current happenings. She is apparently not enjoying her marriage. We won't stop praying for her. Bro, how did you land in trouble like that with the Underworld Grandmasters during the last convention? I seriously do not know what happened. I thought I locked the door to my sanctuary, I don't know I didn't. As I was about to make the soul travel out of my body to join in the convention, I saw Tara at the door, screaming in terror. That was bad bro, 
she was never to even find out about the sanctuary in the first place, let alone see it. You should have been more careful, you know I told you that you have been clumsy since you got married, always leaving meetings abruptly due to her interruptions and so on. So what punishment did the Grand Masters give you, as I am aware it can't go unpunished? Harvey, Tara has to die within the next two years. The Grand Masters asked me to offer her up within the time frame and if she ever mentions it to anyone, she'd die sooner. Are you emotional about that? Man up bro, you know we don't show emotions about our sacrifices. I know bro, this thing is hard. <laughs> What's funny? I thought you told me just before your wedding that you had disconnected yourself emotionally from it. I was so insensitive then, it's not as easy as I thought it would be. Tara and I have become flesh and blood, she is carrying my child. I understand how it feels bro. But man up still, we don't show emotions about our sacrifice. Yes bro. When is Tara due to give birth to your son? In about 3 months time. Good. Make not another mistake. With the child, you know this one will cost you your life. As soon as he is born and home from the hospital, commence his initiation rituals in your sanctuary. Sure, I will. Preparing for that already. To the underworld order of brotherhood we live. And to the underworld order of brotherhood we die. Tara, so I'm now an aunt. I'm so happy darling. Your baby is so beautiful, he's pure perfection. Thank you Tanya, I'm so glad the journey ended well. It wasn't an easy pregnancy. I'm so sorry darling, I was so worried about you, as we didn't get to see that much. Mum and Dad and Sally were worried as well. Thank God you and the baby are fine. It wasn't easy. I needed Mum so badly but Gerald wouldn't allow her come over or allow me go home. It's unfair what Gerald is doing. I think he'd allow Mum come take care of you as you just had a baby now. We have had series of arguments about it while I was pregnant. He said she can't come. He employed a nanny already, who resumes in the morning and closes in the evening, so the nanny would just continue working after delivery. This is ridiculous. You have a mother for God's sake. Just pray for me Tanya. A lot is happening I can't talk about. What is happening Tara? Talk to me please. It is well Tanya, just never stop praying for me. When is dad and mum coming to see me and the baby at the hospital? I need them to come before I leave here, else they might not get to see their grandson soon. This is just crazy, they told me they were on their way as soon as I was getting here. Perfect. Do you need anything, I could get them for you. Not at all, Gerald and the nanny working at home were here earlier with all the things I needed. Alright, you will be fine Tara, okay. Thank you Tanya, Gerald, I didn't see my baby by my side when I woke up, where is he? He is in my sanctuary. What, what is my son doing there Gerald? He is being inducted into his ancestors' spiritual heritage, just as my brother and I were inducted as soon as we were born. My god, no Gerald, leave my son out of this occultism, I won't take this. I'm going to get my son. You had better not meddle, woman. Anyway the door is locked. He'd be there overnight, so get some breast milk pumped in the fridge, so I can feed him through the day and night. This is evil Gerald, I won't take this anymore. Oh god, please don't watch me go on like this. I don't even know where I am going. Who do I talk to? I can't keep this anymore, it's killing me. Tara, you went through all these for four years and didn't tell anyone. Wow, you're so brave. Tanya, I only got to know last year, the day I knew I was pregnant. Gerald warned me not to tell anyone that I was going to die if I did. It's been so hellish keeping this all to myself, it felt like I was dying slowly. I can't imagine. About you dying if you told anyone, it's all lies. That was to threaten you to shut your mouth. You can't die Tara. I just hope that is true. I don't want to die. Who will take care of my son? I can't fathom the thoughts of leaving him with Gerald, he will grow up to be like his father. I need to stay alive to guide him away from that path. I fear seriously as my not less than two weeks old baby is already being inducted into their evil and occultic family heritage. Could this be why Gerald's paternal grandma, his mum and Harvey his brother's wife died so young? Wait a minute, are you for real that all these women died young? Yes Tanya, I'm just connecting the dots. 
Tanya, my life is at risk. What do I do? Wow, you know what Tara, don't panic. You need to go home now because your son would need food. Pump some breast milk for him and remain calm. I will go home now and tell dad and mum everything you have just told me and we will be there first thing tomorrow morning with the police to get you and your son out of there. How is Sally? We haven't really been on a good plane since the day she came to talk with me at my house of her fears about Gerald and I getting married just before our wedding. I should have listened to her, instead I got angry and detached from her. Sally was right. Yes she was. We should have listened. Please go home now Tara, let me go make plans on getting you out of that house ASAP. Alright Tanya, thank you so much. Where did you go to Tara? I just stepped out to cool my head. I need to go pump for my baby now. Alright. Tara has disclosed everything she knows about my involvement in the brotherhood to Tanya her sister and she thinks I'm not aware. It's so unfortunate, she has to be offered up tonight. Powers of the underworld order, receive your sacrifice. Let it be to my best advantage. Let it take me higher through the ranks and let it preserve my family heritage in the underworld through the generations. Take your sacrifice now. It is done. Doctor please how is she? What happened to her? You need to be calm ma'am. She got a cardiac arrest from her sleep over the night and was brought in unconscious by her husband. She is still unconscious and not responding to treatment. We are trying our best. Cardiac arrest. How? I was still with her yesterday afternoon. She was perfect. We can't explain it to. She has no history of even a high blood pressure, not even through her pregnancy. Oh God, Tara must not die. I wonder what the doctor is telling Tanya. She looks afraid. God please let nothing happen to Tara my daughter. Let's stay calm honey. I am hopeful she'd be fine. Tanya, what did the doctor say is going on with Tara? She said she got a cardiac arrest from sleep and was brought in unconscious by her husband, she is still unconscious and not responding to treatment. I'm so scared Sally, Tara must not die. No she won't, let me go sit with dad and mum. Okay please try to calm them. Tell them she'd be alright. Alright. Doctor how is she now? What is it doctor? I'm sorry, we tried our best. But we lost her. No, no doctor. That's not true. Tara can't be dead. I'm sorry. Oh God. Why? Tara, why? Oh why Tara? Now there comes her murderer, Gerald her husband. What do you mean Tanya? What more do you want murderer? What? What do you mean Tanya? You killed my sister Gerald. You said she was going to die and she's dead, are you happy now? Oh no Tanya, please don't talk like that. I am as shocked as you are. I'm pain Tanya, I just lost my wife, please don't talk to me that way. Paula, it's been over a year since Tara's demise and you haven't been the same again. You don't sleep well nor eat well again and your health has declined terribly. I need you to be fine Paula. Tara is gone and I don't want to lose you too. Please heal, please. I'm trying. I feel pain for my daughter and guilty as well. We failed Tara. She shouldn't have married that murderer. I can't even access my grandson. Will we ever see that boy? Would he even know us? I'm so pained at everything. I know, I know. I feel bad, so bad. I failed the most as a father and the head of the home. It's all regrets and regrets for us now, it's so sad. It's all right darling, we will navigate this season. All will be well. Mom, why are we at the park? Today is your birthday. I had expected that we'd be having a party with Dad, Auntie Sally, and the other cousins. I know darling, I chose to have a solemn birthday this year, in remembrance of your aunt, whom you never met, my twin sister Tara. I brought you to this park today, to share some lessons with you from her life and my past life as well, as the last time I saw her was at this park. We both sat on this bench and I didn't know it would be the last time. Ah. Oh. 
I wish I met Auntie Tara, you talk a lot about her. Yes, she was the closest person ever to me before she died. Tara and I lived very loose and wayward lifestyles as young girls. We went hard after rich and influential guys in the hopes of getting married to one, as we love the good life, with all the wealth, glitz and glamour. Our parents didn't approve of our wild lifestyles, but we just didn't care. Along the line, Tara, met this rich handsome guy, who spoils her with all the pleasures her heart could imagine. They were a very desirable pair, always taking her on vacations to different countries, got her a house and a car, even while dating. Eventually he married her, it was her dream come true and my desire to have such a man as well. Sadly, that marriage was a death trap for Tara my sister. The man was an occultic, it was a family heritage, passed down to him from his father, something the father also got from his own father. Tara knew something was wrong as soon as she moved into his home after the wedding, but she couldn't place what it was exactly. She was plagued with nightmares and fears. Soon our family realized that Tara had become a miserable woman after her wedding, her husband never allowed us visit their home, not even when she was pregnant and needed my mother and he rarely allowed her to see us, but she sneaked to visit us once in a while. Tara told me only of the nightmares and nothing else, until few days after she had her baby. She called me on the phone and was crying profusely, she asked that I come meet her here in this park, I came immediately. That was the day she opened up to me about her husband's occultic practices and how he had seized her newborn from her and taken him into the occultic sanctuary in their home to induct him into the cult as was the practice of his family. Wow. That was so wrong. Absolutely wrong. Tara was afraid that day that she was going to die. Her husband already told her that the day she told anyone about it she'd die. I tried to calm her and told her to go home to attend to her baby's feeding and I was going to be there the next morning with our parents and the police, to get her and her son out of his house. The next morning, I woke up to a call from Tara's nanny, that she was at the hospital. Dad, Mum, Sally and I all rushed down there and we were told she had a cardiac arrest from her sleep. In less than an hour, she was dead. That's so sad. Her husband should have been arrested for killing her mom. He threatened to so why was he left to go free? Well, he couldn't have been arrested since he didn't kill her physically. He did it spiritually and it manifested as a cardiac arrest physically. This is such a sad story. Where is he now and Auntie Tara's son? He kept the son away from our family, so he didn't get to meet us all through his growing years, though I hear that he lives abroad now, I have been trying to connect with him, to no avail. As for Gerald, he died some five years ago of a strange disease. Tara's death impacted our family so terribly. My mum died of a broken heart and pain just two years after and my dad lived with the guilt till he died, as Sally warned about Gerald from the dreams she had but no one paid attention to her. I also couldn't forgive myself, but a year after her death, a dear friend shared the love of Jesus Christ with me. I allowed Jesus into my heart and made him my Lord and Savior, turning away from a life of sin to righteousness by faith in him and he turned my life around. It was the same year, I met your dad at the church I began to attend and we got married a year later. My sister's story and my new faith in Christ, caused me to introduce you to Christ from childhood and raise you in the fear of God, so you would not choose the wayward life she and I lived as young girls and I'm so grateful to God that you are walking with Jesus and living a holy life. I realized that the mistake my parents made was that they didn't know the Lord Jesus personally, intimately and experientially and didn't raise us in his ways. They were just morally upright people who raised us with good morals, but good morals alone isn't enough, only the gospel of Jesus Christ has the power to make a child grow in righteousness. Daughter, wealth and riches, should not be the factor to consider in choosing a spouse. Not even beauty and any other ephemeral thing, but the fear of God, their walk with God and sound character, based on scriptural principles. Bible says, there is a way that seems right unto a man, but the end thereof is destruction. Allow God lead you to the right man. My sister and I chose that way leading to destruction and her life got destroyed. It was only by God's mercy I was saved, else I'd have been destroyed too. Many young women have married for riches and wealth and got into a disastrous marriage and they suffer in silence as they can't tell anyone till they die. This would not be your portion in Jesus' name. 
My God will settle you in the right marriage at the right time and give you a beautiful home such as I have with your father. Amen. I thank God for your life mom and how he preserved you by his mercies. Thank you so much for sharing this story with me and the lessons. They are so invaluable. You're welcome daughter.